Have you ever heard of the one-armed fisherman? He caught a fish that was this big. What is up people of the internet? My name is Avery and I've just finished my third year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the nine courses that I took this year, one of these courses was ELEC 341. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 341 during term one of the 2024-2025 school year with Professor Leo Stocco. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is ELEC 341 all about? In this course, you will learn all about systems and control. The first half of this course is all about learning how to identify and model systems using transfer functions and state space representation, while the second half of the course is dedicated to learning about how adjusting certain parameters allows you to control your system. ELEC 341 is offered in winter term one, winter term two, and summer term one. And as of the making of this video, I can only confirm that Professor Leo Stocco usually teaches both terms during the winter and the summer professor varies from year to year. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 341 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week you will have four hours of lectures where the professor will go through the main course concepts through a mixture of some bare bones lecture slides and writing most of the notes on a whiteboard or a chalkboard, at least for Professor Leo Stocco. Speaking of, Professor Stocko's lectures are very engaging, and he's also very expressive as well, as he likes to use quite a few visuals in his notes, such as block diagrams and drawings. And he'll occasionally bring in something that you would never expect to nail a concept home. Literally, he once brought a piece of wood, a hammer, and a nail to demonstrate that by reducing the frequency that you hammer a nail, it makes the job of hammering the nail go faster, which had some relation to Bodhi plots. Quick! But he's going, holy, you know, holy cow, you know, I'm, uh, I'm so he just calmed down. He said, okay, hold on a second, let me try something different. When I slow down, the job goes faster. He'll also break out some jokes here and there, and we all love them. My favorite joke of all time was probably this one. Have you ever heard of the one-armed fisherman? He caught a fish that was this big, and this had to do with always having a reference point for your voltages or your forces. If you cannot attend class or like a short review of what was taught in a given class, Professor Stocko has some very short but helpful lecture videos posted on Canvas, which cover about 75 to 80% of what is covered in the lectures. While they are very helpful, I would still recommend going to class as he sometimes covers things that are important for the assignments and the exams, but doesn't cover them in his videos. In terms of assignments, you will have weekly MATLAB assignments. How these MATLAB assignments work is that you'll be given a PDF of the assignment questions. You'll define some variables at the top of your MATLAB script based on your student number, write out your MATLAB code to compute your answers, store these answers in specific variable names like question1.hs, and then run the grading script that is provided to you to check to see if your answers are correct. Once you've completed your assignment or are satisfied with what you have, after running the grading script, you can click Y to say that yes, you would like to produce a .m file of your answers to submit onto Canvas. This all may seem very confusing at first, but you'll definitely get used to it and it will all become second nature soon enough. You will also have a two-part project to complete in ELEC 341 as well. The project is pretty much just a longer MATLAB assignment and involves a mechanical system, which you will first model and identify in the first part of the project, and then design a controller to control it in the second part. 
The first part of the project is due at the halfway point of the course, and then the second part is due at the end of the course. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 341. The first half of the course is all about system identification. We're talking about how to model your subsystems with transfer functions, approximate transfer functions, second order systems and approximations, mechanical systems, and learn about how electrical and mechanical circuits can be analogous to each other. You'll then use these subsystems to build full system models and incorporate concepts such as motors and transmissions, how to read and manipulate block diagrams, and how to represent your system using state space representation. This will bring you to the first midterm and also the end of the first half of the course. The second half of the course is all about controller design. Basically, we know what our system looks like now, but how can we control it to do what we want it to do? You'll learn about concepts such as feedback control, gain margin, controller identification and delay, phase margin and root locus, PD, PI, and PID controller design, and impedance control. This will bring you to the end of the course and the final exam. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in ELEC 341. In terms of the grading scheme and the exams for ELEC 341, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Your eight MATLAB assignments are weighted at 20% in total. Your project is worth 20% in total as well. Your midterm exam is worth 20% and your final exam is worth 40%. You're allowed to resubmit two of your assignments at the end of the term for regarding say if you miss an assignment or if, like me, you submitted the wrong file for one of the assignments. The syllabus does technically say that you also have to pass the final exam in order to pass the course, but quite a few people in my class didn't pass the final but still ended up passing the course anyways. As mentioned before, everything in this course is done on MATLAB and that includes your midterm and your final. Just like the assignments, you'll be given a PDF of the questions and a MATLAB grading script and you must submit your answers in a .m file. These exams were open book and open internet so you're allowed to use any resources at your disposal but communication with others is just not permitted. For the midterm, you're allowed to jump between different questions if you do get stuck on one of them, but for the final exam, all the grading is sequential, so you need to get question two right before moving on to question three. One notable thing about the final exam is that Professor Stockel always keeps the format of the final exam practice and the final exam exactly the same so there are no surprises. The only thing that changes is the system that you are analyzing. It could be a pulley system or a propeller attached to a motor that is attached to a boat. Other than that, all the questions that are asked in the practice finals are exactly the same as on the final exam. It's just the system that you're analyzing is different. All right, now onto some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 341. Because of how this course is designed with everything being done in MATLAB, this isn't a course where you can just grind practice problems until you memorize the process and then regurgitate it on the exams. You really do need to try to understand the concepts that are being taught in class as you need to know them well enough to be able to translate it into MATLAB code. Especially for the first half of the course, you really need to lock down the system identification stuff because as Stocko says, you can't control your system unless you've identified it. This is especially problem for the final exam as the marking is sequential and if you can't get past the system identification part of the exam, you won't be able to progress further into the controller part of it. I would also highly recommend going to class. If you've gone into the habit of skipping classes already, I think this is the one class that I would actually go to. Even though there is no attendance taken or in-class activities worth marks, Professor Stocko's lectures are very engaging and he'll occasionally drop some information that's very useful for the assignments or the exams. Also, you definitely don't want to miss his in-class demonstrations, like when he lobs tennis balls at you on the first day, or when he explains how ISR timers are just like cooking risotto. Okay, so this is how risotto half makes. I get it, I get it going. Now every, every, when I add chicken stock, I've got to mix that risotto constantly or it's going to get harder. 
So every 10 seconds, I have to mix the, the risotto. Mix, go to my onions, and I peel the onions. Oh, 10 seconds. Mix, go back to my onions. Okay, now I peel them. Let me cut it in half. Oh, 10 seconds. Mix. Now I go back to onion, chop, 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 10 seconds, mix. And for those of you who are curious, I scored a 76% in ELEC 341, and the class average was 75%. I have no idea how I managed to get above the class average since both my midterm and my final exam grades were in the 50% range. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into ELEC 341. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in third year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.